Right now, as we look at the live tape, NVIDIA stock is trading at $181.46 and the intraday action is showing us a market that is trying to decide between fear and greed. We are seeing a push and pull right out of the gate, with the stock hovering in this tight range, digesting the recent volatility that has shaken out some of the weaker hands. The broader market is looking at this price point and wondering if we are seeing a ceiling or a floor. But what you're seeing on the screen is not just a number. It is a tug of war between the immense supply constraints of the Blackwell chips and the macroeconomic jitters regarding interest rates and sector rotation. While the indexes try to find their footing, NVIDIA is acting as the bellwether, the signal flare for the entire technology sector. If you are watching the order flow, you can see institutional blocks moving in, likely establishing positions before the next catalyst hits, which creates a very specific type of tension in the price action this morning. The Expectation versus Reality The Hidden Utility Play here is where we need to separate the noise from the signal. The expectation right now, the narrative you will hear if you turn on the cable news networks or scroll through social media, is that NVIDIA is a hardware play that has had its run. The common belief is that the easy gains are gone, that competition from the likes of AMD and Custom Silicon from Google or Amazon is going to eat away at margins, and that we're approaching a cyclical peak. People look at the chart and they see a vertical ascent, and their natural instinct is to assume gravity must take over immediately. They think this is a boom and bust cycle typical of the semiconductor history we have seen over the last 30 years. That is the expectation, a topping out process followed by a painful correction as demand normalizes. But the reality is significantly different and, frankly, much more interesting. NVIDIA is no longer just a chip company. It is effectively becoming the utility provider for the next phase of the global economy. When you analyze the recent partnership with Synopsys, a massive $2 billion investment and collaboration, you begin to see the pivot. They are not just selling the shovels for the gold rush. They are building the geology maps, the industrial mining infrastructure, and the refining process. The reality is that NVIDIA is entrenching itself into the very workflow of chip design, industrial robotics, and sovereign defense systems. This isn't just about gaming cards or even just training LLMs. It's about sovereign I where nations, not just companies, are buying billions of dollars of compute power to secure their cultural and digital borders. The market expectation is peak hardware, but the reality is early-stage infrastructure utility, which commands a completely different valuation multiple and longevity profile. The soft bank signal and the psychology of regret to understand the magnitude of what is happening, we have to look at the psychology of the major players. Just recently, Masayoshi San, the CEO of SoftBank, publicly admitted to crying, actually weeping over his decision to sell his NVIDIA stake too early. This is a man who manages one of the largest technology funds on the planet, a man who has seen everything and he is openly expressing deep regret over miscalculating the trajectory of NVIDIA stock. This tells us something critical about the institutional mindset right now. There is a fear of being left behind that is far more potent than the fear of a correction. When the smartest capital in the room admits they underestimated the longevity of this trend, it forces every other fund manager to reevaluate their underweight positions. This creates a floor under the price price, because every dip is viewed not as a warning sign, but as a second chance for those who missed the first rocket ship to get back in. It is this psychological undercurrent that supports the valuation even when the technicals look stretched. Deep dive into earnings and the supply problem. Let's look at the hard numbers that came out of the recent fiscal third quarter earnings because they paint a picture of a company that is supply constrained, not demand constrained.
NVIDIA reported revenue of $35.1 billion, which is a staggering figure, beating estimates yet again. But the number that really matters is the data center revenue, which hit $30.8 billion. To put that in perspective, that single division is now generating more revenue than entire Fortune 100 companies do in a year. The gross margins held strong, hovering near that 74-75% range, which is unheard of for a hardware manufacturer. Usually, as you scale hardware, your margins compress because of manufacturing complexities. NVIDIA has defied this gravity because their pricing power is absolute. However, the market reaction was muted. Why? Because the guidance for the next quarter was only $37.5 billion, plus or minus 2%. This is the classic beat and raise fatigue. The market has been conditioned to expect blowout after blowout, so when the company says, we are going to grow, but we are literally physically unable to make chips fast enough to grow faster, the algos get disappointed. But think about what that actually means. It means the backlog is growing. It means the demand for the upcoming Blackwell architecture is so intense that the supply chain can't keep up. In any other industry, having more customers than you can serve is the best problem to have. It implies that revenue visibility for 2026 and 2027 is incredibly clear. We are not guessing if they will sell the chips. We are just calculating how fast TSMC can print them. The Sovereign AI Thesis We need to talk about a concept that is not getting enough airtime. Sovereign AI this was a key theme in recent communications from Jensen Huang. Historically, NVIDIA's customers were gamers, then crypto miners, then cloud hyperscalers like Microsoft and Google. Now, the customers are countries. Japan, Canada, France, India. They are all realizing that they cannot rely on American corporations to house their data and intelligence. They need their own domestic supercomputers. This shifts the total addressable market, TAM, from the billions into the trillions. When a government decides to build AI infrastructure, they are not price sensitive in the same way a corporation is. They are buying for national security and economic competitiveness. This effectively creates a new layer of demand that is insulated from standard recessionary pressures. Even if the consumer economy slows down, the U.S. government or the Japanese government is not going to stop building their AI defense capabilities. NVIDIA stock is the direct beneficiary of this geopolitical anxiety. The competition, why Google and AMD are still catching up. Now a lot of you watching might be thinking about the competition. You hear about Tesla stock and their Dojo supercomputer, or Apple stock and their internal silicon, or specifically the threat from Google's TPUs or AMD's MI300 series. It's a valid concern. Big tech companies do not like paying the NVIDIA tax on their margins and they are actively trying to design their own chips to reduce reliance on Jensen Hang's empire. We saw this with the recent news about Amazon and Google ramping up their custom silicon efforts. But here is the nuance that most analyses misses. Software. The moat around NVIDIA is not just the GPU. It's the CUDA layer that developers have spent nearly a decade learning. If you're a developer using Schwab Intelligent Portfolios to manage your wealth, you know that switching costs are high. It's the same for AI engineers. To switch from NVIDIA to AMD, you have to rewrite code, optimize new libraries, and risk delays in your model training. In the race to AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, speed is the only metric that matters. If switching to a cheaper AMD chip costs you three months of engineering time, you have already lost. The opportunity cost of being second is far higher than the cash cost of buying NVIDIA GPUs. So while competitors will chip away at the low-end inference market, the high-end training market, the premium tier, remains NVIDIA's fortress. Strategic Partnerships and the Industrial Metaverse 
We also need to look at the industrial side of the business. The recent chatter about NVIDIA partnering with companies like Phonic for robotics and the deeper integration with Tesla stock for autonomous driving suggests that the next leg of growth is physical AI. We're moving from chatbots to robots. NVIDIA's Omniverse platform is designed to be the operating system for this physical AI. They are creating digital twins of factories, car plants, and entire cities. This allows companies to simulate production before they spend a dime on real equipment. This is a recurring revenue software model that sits on top of the hardware sales. It transforms NVIDIA from a cyclical hardware vendor into a sticky software-as-a-service SaaS powerhouse. This is why the valuation multiples might